Welcome to the French Tech Podcast. We're still here at Hello Tomorrow Singapore, where we're exploring how deep tech can be leveraged to create a better future. I'm very happy to welcome Professor Dean Ho. Welcome. Happy to be here. Could I ask you to quickly introduce yourself? Sure, I am uh, Dean Ho. I am director of the N1 Institute for Health and head of the Department of Biomedical Engineering at NUS. And you are from LA, is that correct? Born and raised in LA. Uh, never thought I would leave LA. Uh, started my career in Chicago, which is a wonderful oh, city. Yeah. Moved back to LA and then ended up in Singapore, which has been amazing. Oh, really? When? Uh, about 15 months ago. Oh, wow. And oh. I've been coming here regularly for about uh, five years, collaborating on clinical trials, uh, technology development, and uh, my family and I made the full move last July. Fantastic. Yeah. We're here to today to talk about a subject that's really at the heart of what Hello Tomorrow is all about, but using AI to treat cancer patients. Yes, so what we do at the N1 Institute and my team, and so N1 stands for N of one. Uh, oh. meaning it's a single patient. And what we do is we often design clinical trials specifically for each patient that we recruit into a study. And what's interesting is we use only that patient's own data to dynamically dose, for example, chemotherapy only okay. for themselves. We don't use large population data and apply it to the individual because the outcomes can be quite different. So what are some of the advantages and perhaps inconveniences of working so on an NS1 basis. Sure, what's interesting about this is that um, when, we th when we think about the advantages, everybody is unique from each other. We know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is we figure out a way using AI to optimize the dosing of different drugs, not only for cancer, but for infectious diseases, basically any disease indication out there. And I think oftentimes there's not enough attention paid to dosing. People think, hey, it's, if you give these drugs and these drugs don't work, then this patient will never respond to this drug. But the reality is with the right dosing, really? you can not only get people to respond, you can actually really optimize their outcomes, right? The challenge is we're all unique from each other, so we need different dosages from each other. Mm -hmm. But the big challenge is we need different dosages from ourselves from day to day. Oh, really? And so, exactly. So a patient who is given these drugs at these dosages on a Monday, the next Monday, they probably could, they could very well need different dosages to maintain optimal care. And the challenge is, using conventional medicine, when a patient doesn't respond to those drugs anymore, mm -hmm. you can sometimes tweak the dose and they s respond again. Oh, wow. Versus, and the thing is, in these diseases that we're looking at, if a patient is deemed to be no longer responsive to a certain treatment, then they actually kick them off the, the drug and then look for something else. But when patients run out of options, that's when problems arise, right? And so when we think about advantages, when we use a person's own data for their own care, we're really capturing that N of one response and optimization. The cool part is how do you implement this, right? And so what I tell people is when drugs are developed, right now when they have a new drug, they have to figure out the dose. What they'll do is they'll recruit, say, 100 people and give them the low dose, a different group of 100 give them this dose, and a different group of 100 and give them that dose. They take the population optimal response and just give that to everybody mm. after yes. that. Mm. Yeah. But if someone doesn't respond to that dose, maybe they could respond to this dose because there's an immune system. It may, you know, right dose for the right person, but they will have never seen that dose because they're given what everybody else was given. And okay. so what we do is instead of 100, 100, 100 at this dose, we can give each person this dose, this dose, and this dose, which is totally allowed. We run clinical trials, we right. get all the, yeah. the, you know, the approvals. Then we can better calibrate how each person's responding. It really, it often doesn't require any extra effort, maybe a few extra blood draws, a, a right. few extra images, yeah. very integratable with standard healthcare workflow. So this is a very complicated problem, obviously. Sure. How do you leverage AI technology to solve it? So what's cool about the technology is we discovered the relationship between drugs and their dosages, as well as the resulting efficacy or safety of treatment using AI and neural networks. It's a very smooth surface if you map out for each person, if you mm -hmm. give a dose of a drug and you measure the response, give them a different dose of the drug, measure the response, and then another dose, measure the response, you can plot out this patient-specific curve. Okay. That curve was discovered with neural nets on cell lines originally. 
Oh. Right, and because with cell lines you can run a lot of experiments, get a lot of yeah. data to solve yeah. for these constants, but then we eventually figured out that the shape of this curve held constant from cells to animals to people, it's just that the curves look different from person to person. Right, and the curves evolve over time, and so we don't need as much data anymore in order to calibrate out each person's curve. Right, for example, week one, week two, week three, we get one data point from each, a dose and a response. Week four, we know how to dose. Weeks two, week three, week four, we can dose week five. Three, four, five, we can dose six. We, we continually evolve with the patient, and we are small data-based AI. We do not require big data, although we are very complementary with a lot of the big data approaches that are being used now as well. So is there any way to, and I, I presume that this is something that you're thinking about, to standardize all of, it, all of this into a standard medical workflow where you start with population insights, bring it back to the individual level and just plug in a treatment protocol? Sure, that's a great question. So how do we integrate this into a standard workflow is, first of all, it's very straightforward to implement what we do. Okay. And so what's important to note is the clinician always has the final say in that dose that we give. Right. And the, bringing this into the hospital, we, we were running clinical trials, we run other clinical trials. What's important that is that this is also having us relook at the design of a traditional clinical trial. Because statistics, right? So if you think about a standard trial, you know all the participants are different from each other, but you kind of mm -hmm. give them the same pill. Yeah. What if the regimen is different and the people are different? We can't just look for standard statistical analysis to find whether or not this is a better treatment. So we've worked with regulatory agencies to find ways where we can, for example, tighten up and reduce the variability between mm -hmm. patients' outcomes using our AI as a measure of outcome. And so it, it, we need to do multiple patients, many patients, but it helps us redefine, you know, can we do this in a prescribed number of patients to get us the right answers without saying, we need 10,000 people, we need 20,000 people, and so we can hunt for statistical significance. Right, there really is a, a good way to partner with traditional clinical trial design and new ways using this AI to optimize outcomes. That's fantastic. I think there's so much promise in this kind of technology and in that individual and this one level treatment that you're about talking it. about. What's the biggest challenge that you're facing? In terms of challenges, I think the earliest challenges we had were bridging our expertise with those of the clinicians who treat the patients. You can imagine, we had a case where we worked on a patient with advanced uh, solid cancer, and we, with a very small amount of data, found that this patient with a 50% reduction in their dose of their chemo, we could actually increase their efficacy. So with mm -hmm. a reduction in the dose, Lower dose, better outcome. Wow. Mm. And at the time, the oncologists were, saw that as challenging because the standard approach in oncology is to give a very high and a fixed yep. dosage. And after the approvals and consent forms were signed, gave the low dose, within a week the patient's cancer marker was at the lowest level they'd seen during the entire course of the study. But after that, we eventually started dynamically dosing, sometimes a little bit higher, a little bit lower, nowhere near the maximum tolerated dose. And eventually the clinicians got it, right? But it took time, right? And so the biggest challenge is to find a way to effectively communicate what we do and how it fits in with their standard protocols. Okay. We can no longer rely on the fact where we say, oh, if they didn't understand, then it's their fault, right? It's nobody's fault. It's our responsibility to, to properly communicate how we can build this into a standard um, treatment regimen. So how long before we see this in standard treatment regimens? You know, that's a great question. In terms of standard treatment, first thing is that the way we get, it's not about how much data we get, right? It's how we get the data, all right? So right. instead of a thousand people at all these different dosages, we just need each person to do this, this, and this. If you acquire the data the right way, we will be able to do cool things. So in terms of integrating with standard of care, I think you know, we, we can really work that out. In terms of broadening the deployability of this, we're mm. still running clinical trials. Right. But what's exciting is that we are contacted basically weekly by hospitals all over the world now to see if we can help them with their patients. And I think that's the first step. I think we, we're starting to really bridge that gap between conventional medicine and the next generation of medicine now we're starting to see the results, and then we're also seeing hospitals reach out to us and say, look, I think I would like to lower, do lower the dose of the drugs. 
do you have a way to more rationally guide us on that? And so after these many years, we're starting to see reciprocation. And so I think this is going to be the precursor to a lot more deployability down the road. Wow, that's fantastic. It's so great to get some of your insights on this Glad developing technology. It's it. fantastic to meet all of these bright people here today, sharing the innovations that they're working on. Thank you very much, Neem, for taking the time to talk to us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And have Thank a great you. day here at Hello Tomorrow. Thank you, you too. Thank you.